good morning students so today i am going to take a class on fundamentals of computer system and it is actually the basic concepts of computers so what is computers how computers work what are the different components of computers so it is totally the basic concept of computers so first if we see what is computers so we go to slides so what is computer a computer is an electronic device used to process data so a computer can convert data into information which is useful to computer use to people or society so a complete computer system includes four basic but distinct parts or components so one is hardware software data and users so these are the basic we can also say components of the computer system so if someone asks what is computer then we can also say that a computer is an electronic device which takes some input data by input data and process it and gives a, after processing it gives us the required information from the computer system to output devices so it consists of four basic components hardware software data and user so what is here from diagrammatically we can clear uh, definitions now basic concept of computer this is people it is we are the users of computer systems so data data and information so we have some difference data means the raw data which are given to input to the computer systems and after processing computers it gives some meaningful information so hardware means physical components of the computer systems monitors keyboard etc and software means the internal programs means set of programs for which computer runs and these are the basic components you can see now hardware a hard a computer's hardware consists of electronic devices the parts physical components or physical parts we can see and test so the term device refers to any piece of hardware used by the computer system such as keyboard monitor modem mouse etc so these are nothing but some hardware so it consists speaker modem microphone ram mouse cd rom drive ports lots of different physical components of computer is known as hardware through which you can see you can test so this is these are nothing but computer hardware and now software so software also known as programs so it consists of organized set of instructions for controlling the computer system so a software is a set of programs through which computer runs so some programs exist for computers use to help it manage its own tasks and devices some other programs exist for users and enable the computer to perform tasks for us such as creating documents creating slides doing some calculations so this different categories of software we have so what is data data consists of raw fact which is 
which the computer can manipulate and process into information that is useful to people by users. So computerized data is digital, meaning that it has been reduced to digits or numbers. The computer stores and reads all data as numbers. So digital means it consists nothing but binary bits, zero and one. So computer understand only zero and one, which is also known as machine language. So all the computers use data in digital form. They convert data into forms which people can understand, such as text, numerals, sound, images. So users. So users, people are computers operator or users. Some types of computer can operate without such interventions from people, but personal computers are designed specifically for use by people. So users means we are so general common people or different categories of users we have in computer systems later we have we have to introduce different categories of users now computer if we see the computer architectures then we have following components or following units types of hardware a CPU that is central processing unit, the brain of the computer system, memory, the storage area where data or information are stored, how memory is measured, input output devices, so which computer can take data from out, outward world and it process and it gives out the required information or result from the computer output devices the storage devices etc etc so types of hardware if you see a computer's hardware device are categorized as follows if we see the hardware so we have processors that is cpu memory storage device input output devices storage storage devices these are different categories of hardwares so these are the hardwares Input output there, memory, processor, input, storage area, these different pen drives. So output that is from monitors, printers. So these are binary bits. But these are the physical the image or physical concept. Different physical okay, hardware. Now CPU, the main brain of the computer system, this is CPU. So the procedure that transforms raw data into useful information is called processing. So what is processing? That means raw data transformed to useful information with the help of processor that is processing. This function is divided between computers, processors and memory. So the processor is also called a central processing unit CPU. It manages all devices and performs the actual processing of data. So the CPU consists of one or more chips attached to the computer's main circuit board, binary board. So that means CPU is a brain of computer systems. So it is the processor, it is also known as processor, through which computer system is managed, controlled, or the operations, so that computer system do it smoothly. So this is the, this is about the CPU, central processing unit. Then memory unit. So memory is, is also consists of chips attached to the motherboard. So memory means where the, the area where information and data are stored temporarily or permanently. So memory holds data and program instructions as the CPU works with them. So this memory is known as RAM random access memory. The CPU can find any piece of data in RAM when it needs for its processing. So RAM is volatile meaning it holds data only when power is on. So when is when the power is off, RAM's contents are lost. So this is basic about the memory. So it is important unit of the computer system. Next we see how memory is measured. So how memory what what is the unit to measure the memory? The smallest usable unit of memory 
from user of memory is the byte sometimes it is bits so the amount of memory required to hold one character like character a or numeral 2 so computer works with large chunk of data measured in multiple bytes so if you see bits bits means either 0 and 1 that means one bit so uh, computer understand only binary uh, that is binary numbers that is digits only 0 and 1 so at the time um, one flip one device which is flip flop so flip flops is the basic blocks of computer's memory so in one flip flop at only one in one time only one bit is actually stored so when eight bits are combined it becomes one byte and computers work with large chunk of then one in lots of bytes hundred bytes combined or in actual bytes below one zero two four bytes it become kb kilobytes again one zero two four kilobytes it become megabyte so in this way we, we see the one zero two four megabytes it become gigabytes and one zero two four gigabytes it become one terabyte so in this way we have lot larger units of computer memory now come to input and output devices so input devices accepts data instructions from the users or from another computer systems the keyboard mouse are example of input devices so output devices returns process data back to the users or another computer system like printers monitors are some example of output devices so communication devices such as modems, network interface card, perform both input and output, allowing computer to share information. This is the basic diagram of computers. So if we see there are monitors, system box, microphones, keyboards, mouse, this. So now storage devices, store area where Data are stored. So storage devices holds data not currently being used by a CPU. So data is commonly stored on magnetic or optical disk. Its types used for special medium for storing data or its central surface. So a disk drive is a device which reads data from and writes data to a disk. So most new computer features are floppy disk drive, a hard, drive, hard disk drive, and optical disk drive. So the most common of optical storage devices are CD-RAM and DVD-RAM devices. Drives. So this is about the storage devices. Now this is, we see the area, hard disk, this is hard disk, CD-RAM drive here, and floppy drive here today. Now, nowadays floppy drive is removed totally eliminated so now hard disk drive cd-rom these are the actually basic diagrams of storage devices now software if we come to software software is a set of electronic instructions that tells the computer how to do certain job or certain task a set of instruction is of 10 called a program so Software means set of programs through which computer runs compared to some specific task. So a set of instruction is often known as a program. So it is important concept. So when a computer is using a particular program, it is said to be running or executing the program. So to most important, to most common types of programs are system. That means softwares are system software and application software. So if we see the categories of softwares, we have two basically. One is system software through which system runs, and another is application software through which some applications runs with the help of system software. So later on, we'll go one by one. Now this is the real test. So this is so a test, real world, so application software, system software, and useful output and such. So this is the 
this concept gives us the about softwares. Now, system software. What system software? System software exists primarily for the computer system itself to help the computer perform specific functions. That means system software is the software through which system runs, through which computer system is running, doing some special job itself. So one major type of system software is nothing but operating system. So different operating system, Windows, Linux, Unix, these are nothing but system software. All computers require an operating system. Without operating system, how computer work? So the operating system tells computer how to interact with the users and their own devices. So common operating system, Windows, Macintosh, Unix, Linux, these are this type of. Now application software means application software tells the computer how to accomplish specific tasks a user requires, such as creating documents, editing a graphic image, some importing application software, this word processing, MS Word, MS Excel, MS PowerPoint, database, web design tools, communications program, utilities, internet applications, networking software, multimedia frame, etc. Now, computers classifications. If we see different categories of computers, then we have supercomputers, mainframe computers, mini computers, workstations, microcomputers, or personal computers. These are five categories. So, if we see supercomputers, supercomputers, most powerful computers, they use the problem of complex calculations. Because of its size and expense, supercomputers are relatively rare and its supercomputers are used by universities, government agencies and large businesses. It is most powerful, actually, it is the most powerful computers. Now mainframes, mainframes computer can support hundreds or thousands of users handling massive amount of input and output stories. So mainframe computers are used in large organizations where many user needs to access shared data and programs. So mainframes are also used as e-commerce server handling transactions over the internet. That's are the that's about mainframe computers. This actually the power of mainframe computers is less than the super super computers. Now if we see mini computers, mini computers are smaller than mainframes but larger than microcomputers so many computers usually have multiple terminals so many computers may be used for network servers and internet servers so this is actually smaller than mainframes computers but larger than mini microcomputers so if we see Workstations, so workstations are powerful single user computers. Uh, we, whatever we use in our labs, etc. Workstations are used for task and network, great deal of number, pressing power, as has as product, designing computer animations. So, workstations are often used for, as network and internet servers. So, sun workstation, etc. Finally, microcomputers, PC, what we are using in our labs, laptops. So, microcomputers are more commonly known as personal computer, the PC applied to IBM PC com compatible computers. So, full size desktop computer is most common type of PC. Not the laptop computer is used by people who need to power a desktop system, but also portability. So, these are example of microcomputers. So, how computer represents data? It is important. So we know that computer understands only ma machine language that is binary numbers. So the binary number is the binary number system, bits, bytes, text, code, etc. So if we see binary numbers, so computer processing is performed by the transistors, which are switched with the help of two possible state on and off. So all computers that are converted to a series of binary numbers. 1 and 0, which is known as machine language, 
for example, you see sentence as a collection of letters, but computer sees such letters as collection of ones and zeros. So, if a transistor is assigned a value of one, it is on. If it is assigned a value of zero, it is off. So, a computer's transistor can be switched on and off millions of times each second. Now, when any number system that to convert data into string of number, computer use binary number system. So this is humans use the decimal number. We use this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. These are not nothing but decimal numbers. So, but computer only decimal number basis actually 10. So computer understand only binary which basis 2 through n1 so the binary number system works the same way as decimal number but when there's two available symbols 0 and 1 greater than binary it's consists of 10 from 0 to 9 that is why it is base 10 and binary is 2 because the 2 0 and 1 so this is nothing but conversions 0 0 1 1 2 1 0 3 means 1 1 in binary equivalent. So 4 decimal is known as 1 0 0 in bi is binary equivalent. 5 1 0 1 6 1 1 0 7 1 1 1 8 1 0 0 0 9 1 0 0 1 10 1 0 1 0. This is actually conversions from decimal to binary. So our computer represents data bits and bytes. So a single unit of data is called bit having a value either 1 or 0 it is 1 bit so computer works with collection of bits grouping them to represent larger piece of data such as letters of the alphabet so 8 bits makes up 1 byte we have already said a byte is the amount of memory needed to store one alphanumeric characters so one characters needs one byte to store a one character so it is 8 bits so one <coughs> with one byte the computer can represents one up to 56 defined symbols or characters so this is how we one bit so one on 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 that is one eight bits that means all eight are ones it beats one byte so that is all means all are one if you see so how computer yes how computer represents data text code so a text code is a system that use this binary numbers one and zeros to represent characters understood by humans that means letters and numerals are actually text code that human understand but Computer and listen on this event, so it's some coding scheme so that whatever we input as text code by user, it must be converted to its equivalent binary form. So, an early text code system is called EBDIC. E -B -C -B -S. It used 8 bits code, but is used primarily in order in older mainframe systems. The most common text code set is ASCII. That is American Standard Code for Information Interactions. ASCII means so each character consists of eight bits, one byte of data. So ASCII is used in nearly all personal computers. We generally use ASCII code. So another Unicode text is Unicode text code. That is its character consists of sixteen bits. That means two bytes of data. So these are nothing but the text code how computer represents data. Next, a simple example of ASCII code. So, 0 means this, 1, this. So, A, capital A means this, ASCII code equivalent B, this. In this way, we have each character we have equivalent ASCII code of this. Now, how computer process that? So where processing occurs? So the we have no we have basic units to process data. 
by computer system so that is the control unit the arithmetic and logical unit machine cycles the role of memory in processing types of ram etc etc so if you see cpu cpu central processing unit the processing takes place in this the central processing unit cpu the system's memory is also plays a crucial role in processing data so both the cpu and memory are attached to the system's motherboard which connects all the computer's devices together enabling them to communicate so this is the cpu where we have attached in the motherboard so these are the memories ramps so mother with this cpu is attached here now control unit the two main part of cpu is con one is control unit c and another is arithmetic logic unit l the control unit directs the flow of data through the cpu to and from other devices and the control unit stores the cpu's microcode which contains the instructions for all the tasks the cpu can perform so these are the actually the, as a whole the scenario so input devices and this is the cpu consists of two control unit and arithmetic logic unit and output devices that are the control unit and memory and storage is this, these are the units and other units so as a whole this is the basic block diagram of computer system so the arithmetic logic unit the actual manipulation of data takes place in the ALU arithmetic logic units that means addition the different operations so ALU can perform say, arithmetic and logic operation addition subtraction multiplication divisions so ALU is connected to a set of resistors small memory area and the CPU resistors means small memory area of CPU where temporary data are stored which all the data and program instruction while they are processing so, so ALU operations, these are operations, different operations done by ALU, add, subtract, divide, so memory, memory means RAM stores data and program committed by the CPU, the contents of RAM is sensed repeatedly and obtained, this volatile memory, temporary memory, read only memory, ROM is non-volatile, that is permanent, it holds instructions that run the computer when power is first turned on. So the CPU access its location in memory by using unique number called memory address. So memory address is the unique number through which CPU access the location in memory for processing data. Types of RAM. There are two basic types of RAM, static and dynamic. So dynamic RAM, DRAM, ships mass resource with electricity very frequently or they will lose their contents. A static RAM SRAM does not need to be researched as often as DRAM and it can hold its contents longer. So another type of RAM is called flash memory which can store its content after power is turned off. So flash, flash memory is used in digital camera to store pictures. The different categories of RAM we have we will we'll get later on. So these are the RAMs, so these are the RAMs, these are address bus, motherboard, CPU, data bus, ROM, this drive, this scenario. Now another category of memory is cache memory. So cache memory is high speed memory which holds the most recent data and instructions that have been loaded by the CPU. So this fastest memory. So cache is located directly on the CPU or between the CPU and RAM making this faster than normal RAM. So CPU residing re cache is called level 1. L1 cache, external cache is called level 2, L2 cache. The, the amount of cache memory has a tremendous impact on computer speed. That means cache memory is very important component. So this is the cache. So CPU and this is RAM. So between them cache. CPU and CPU. So this is cache. So this is different categories of cases. Now operating system. So we have operating system manages all other programs that runs on PC. 
So operating system provides services to programs user including file management, memory management, process management, printing to provide service to programs the OS Max system calls requesting other hardware and software resources to perform tasks. So later on we will have different uh, softwares on operating system. Different categories, different types of uh, multitasking operating system so if multitasking is capable of running multiple processes simultaneously so multitasking OS lets you run multiple programs at the same time so through multitasking we can do the different several jobs so so different job of operating system files, scripted files, directories so is even file management how how directories and file managed by the operating systems. Yes. Now hardware manage, management of hardware is another job of operating system. Later on we'll have different area. So finally these are the how computer systems, operating system, application software, CPU and hardware. So these are the logical diagram of computers so the user interface there are two types of one graphical user interface and as command line interface so graphical means a modern operating system like windows messengers provide graphical user interface so graphical user interface lets us control the system using mouse click graphical objects on screen so this this is the a command line means through it some old, older operating system like DOS, desktop operating system, and Unix. This command line interface. So in command line interface, we type commands at a prompt. So user command line interface in user level means command based of actually in operating system. So database and management. These are later on. I think today. I stop here another in class another class I cover in other basic concept of the fundamentals of operating system uh, computer system. So thank you, thank you all.